We're right back in it. Yeah! The insurance goal for the Utah Yeti. Penalty kill. Jared Veshi, empty netter, and your Utah Yeti are off to the conference finals. We're gonna fucking do it, baby! The Utah Yeti are your Western Conference champions! They're off to the Stanley Cup final! Don't in the middle. Curry, backdoor! Rymo! Rymo! Let's fucking go! Hughes finds Cooley. Cooley, go, 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 go! Find it! Back to Wierenski, slap shot! Ah, that's it! Zach Wierenski and the Utah Yeti have won the Stanley Cup! I don't believe it! I don't believe it! Yes! Alright, Utah! We are back as Stanley Cup champions! That's right, GM Superb Man is a success here in Utah, bringing a Stanley Cup to the Utah Yetis in five seasons, beat the Utah Jazz by I don't even know how many years, and man, what a playoff run it was. That first round against the Winnipeg Jets. I just want to show you guys something. Just want to show you something. Because the storyline has been the Utah fans versus GM Superb, man. A lot of friction, a lot of disagreements. And man, it could have been horrible for me. So we started off the series against Winnipeg up 3-0. Great. But then that old pattern of allowing three or four games of, of, of losses to happen in the playoffs. It showed up against the Winnipeg Jets here. A Game 4 loss, a Game 5 loss, a Game 6 overtime loss. It was Game 7 that we got back on track. If I lost that game, it would have been GM Superman needs to resign, he needs to fire, the team is absolutely horrible. But we win that game, and we go on over the next 15 games to go 13-2. and 13-2. and two. We only lost one game to Nashville. We swept the Edmonton Oilers, and we lost one game to the New York Rangers. So I want you guys to think about that, right? When it comes to the success of your franchise in an NHL simulation, it comes down to one game. One game, game seven, I was on the brink of being the worst general manager in the league to all of a sudden going 13-2 and two to win the Stanley Cup, the first Stanley Cup in franchise history. So... Brutal, man. I'm not going to brag. It could have been real bad as well, but we got it done, Utah. We are Stanley Cup champions. Now, in the last video, we left it at overtime, so I'd like to go through and take a look at some of the individual stats, the player stats, the team stats, all that good stuff. We can summarize the playoffs. We can get to the draft. We can see what's available. Oh, man, there's a lot that we can still do. So let's take a look at the team stats and player stats. You know, the team stats should be kind of fun as well, just because uh, we did so well on the power play, I think. So throughout the entire playoffs, our power play percentage at 25.9. So this was something that was always a problem for us in the playoffs before. 25.9. It did go down. It was at 30, but still really like that. And the penalty kill percentage, 88.7. That's Swayman. That's Cooley. That's Gunther. That's my defenseman. That is Quinn Hughes in there as well. And we'll talk about Quinn Hughes in a little bit. But the team played absolutely fantastic in the playoffs. Now, player stats. What do we got here? Let's take a look at the forwards first. All right, Logan Cooley. There is your Conn Smythe winner. He beat out our captain, Jared Veshi, for the Conn Smythe. What do you guys think? Deserved 19 goals for Jared Veshi in 21 games played, yet 33 points for Cooley. So I don't really care. They were both plus 14. To me, you got your goal scorer, you got your playmaker. If it happened, it happened. The Conn Smythe is not something I'm targeting. The Stanley Cup was. So congratulations to Logan Cooley. Jared Jared Veshi, don't worry, tons of time to get your uh, to get your con Smythe. Patrick Line, 24 points in 21 games played. Noah Effin Gregor. We are extending this guy. He fits in on every line. He can play center. He can play left wing. He can kill penalties. And he got himself 15 points in 21 games played. Eight goals. Eight goals for Gregor. My God. Dylan Gunther, 12 points. Josh Doan, 10 points. Boris Nabokov, agent 47 with the five-minute major. Taking down Jake Ottinger in game four of the second round. Beautiful job. Rymo Curry. Only three goals for Rymo Curry. But all three were either third period goals or overtime markers. Rymo Curry, when he decides to step up, he steps up in a big way. Ladislav Sivan, three goals. Yeah, our depth was fantastic. Defensively, Quinn 
Hughes. 19 assists, 1 goal, 20 points. Number 2, Andreas Kurtz. 13 points. Hey, Kurtz had 3 goals compared to Quinn Hughes's 1 goal, but Quinn Hughes did have a lot more assists. Although we played Quinn Hughes on the power play, so hang on a second. Power play points for Quinn Hughes, 8. So he had 12 even strength points. Power play points for Kurtz, 1. So he had 12 even strength points. So in the playoffs, the two offensive defensemen, even strength, Kurtz did the exact same thing. And if he got power play time, maybe he moves up. Although, I will say this. Quinn Hughes, I decided to go for Quinn Hughes because of the suggestion from the fans. It wasn't just the offensive production. You take a look at his defense. The reason why we sim so well, the reason why we, we were able to keep other teams from scoring is because you got a 96 overall defenseman in there. Don't think I don't understand that. So it's not like Kurtz is doing better than Hughes. You needed both of them. But it's good to see Andreas Kurtz chipping in with some goals there and some uh, and some points. Zach Wierenski, the biggest moment in Utah Yeti history with the slap shot goal with Jared Veshi total eclipsing on front of the net. It hit off Panarin. It hit off the shoulder of Ke'Andre Miller. It went off the freaking shoulder of Shuster and into the net it was just meant to happen Lindstein Chikorin Romanov Kessel ring and then this man this man Jeremy Swayman 16-3 and 2 only lost three games in regulation a 9-2-4 save percentage a goals against of 2-3-5 the Bulldog Jeremy Swayman unbelievable unbelievable playoff run all right, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen, your Utah Yeti. Now, I think I want to rip off the Band-Aid instead of slowly pulling it off. I'm going to say it. You people aren't going to like it, but I'm going to say it. We are not going to re-sign Quinn Hughes. I've been trying to figure out what the team would look like for next season. Unless Quinn Hughes wants like a 9 or $10 million deal, we just don't have the extension. So I'll show you guys. He's asking for 13.3. So if you offered him an extension, you could get him for maybe 12, maybe 11 something. The problem is, is that I can't offer him an extension unless I free up the cap dollars. But I can't free up the cap dollars until I trade away players. But I can't trade away players until we get to the draft. And then once you get to the draft, you can no longer extend. So the only option to bring Quinn Hughes back is by paying this guy 13, 14, 15 million. But to do that, you'd need to get rid of a few roster players. Now, I would be willing to do that, but here's the problem, all right? And it's going to go back to the old argument, Andreas Kurtz. Andreas Kurtz is an offensive defenseman, and I want this guy to be our defenseman of the future. Now, if Kurtz was a two-way, if Kurtz was a, was a defensive defenseman, and he worked with Quinn Hughes, then I'd make it work. But the fact is, is that if Quinn Hughes is on the team, then Kurtz is on the second line, then Kurtz doesn't get any power play time. It just doesn't work out. And I will say this, a silver lining for you guys, we've now reopened a new Stanley Cup window. When you take a look at the best players on our team, uh, it is led by Jared Veshi, but his big boy contract kicks in next year. Same thing with Kurtz, same thing with all of our young guns. So we now have an eight-year Stanley Cup window that has opened up. Within those eight years, there'll be another franchise player that goes to free agency like a Quinn Hughes. And we will be in a position to go after him two, three, four, five years from now. But we got to take a step back to jump forward again. And by paying Quinn Hughes, it just doesn't work with this team. So I'm ripping the Band-Aid off. I know people aren't going to like that. We'll see a lot of dislikes in the, uh, in the uh, YouTube video. In the comment section, it's not going to be there. But I feel a lot better about this situation now that we've won a Stanley Cup and I can kind of get away with this right thank you very much Quinn Hughes for delivering a Stanley Cup I gotta thank the Twitch scouts and the YouTube scouts for suggesting Quinn Hughes over Austin Matthews it came through it worked we got our cup but now it's time to worry about the eight-year window led by Jared Veshi. All right, so that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, we got the NHL entry draft. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, we got to do this whole thing. We got to do this whole thing. All right, so the NHL entry draft. Who was the worst team in the NHL? I got to see this. Because the last two years, it was uh, 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 the Ottawa Senators. They took... Uh, Gordon Lynch in the in the third year, and they took Bear Ernie last year. And look at that. The Ottawa Senators are once again the worst team in the NHL. So they're getting a top three pick. They're getting a top three pick here. What about the Minnesota Wild? Where are they? Minnesota. They, they didn't make the playoffs, but it doesn't look like they're going to... Well, they could move up, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a first. So... With that being said, what do we have in terms of draft class? I've already sent out the scouts. We don't have to worry about anything. Okay. Uh, but when we look at the scouts, oh my goodness. Patrick 
Hanzus. Right wing, medium elite. Is he a sniper? I don't even know. But Patrick Hanzus, alongside of Bear Ernie and Tim Stutzel, you got your sniper, power forward, playmaker combination. They could also go with Michael Teverdoski, uh, uh, Tim Law. I don't know much about these guys. And with our depth draft picks, who could we get? Uh, uh, Kalinin. Hang on a second here. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, Kalin is 10. Strom is at 60. Medium elite goaltender. Cloud check 104. On the eight. It's low elites in there. Yeah, okay. So I don't know what I want to do just yet. I don't know what I want to do. I haven't been able to do any pre-scouting or anything. So we're just going to do this. We're going to do this together. All right. So let me bring up again the uh, draft lottery uh, uh, thing. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. I'm not looking. We are starting the simulation. That is the uh, playoffs have ended. The Utah Yetis are your Stanley Cup champions. And the Belleville Senators, look at that. The Belleville Senators won the Calder. So the Senators have a good AHL team. They have two young rookies. And they're getting a top three pick this season as well. Damn, Ottawa. Damn, Ottawa. St uh, salary cap is going up also. Okay. And here we go, the draft lottery, ladies and gentlemen. So, it is the Hans Zeus sweepstakes. Who's going to win the draft lottery in year number five? Here we go. Awards. Yeah, we'll get to the awards. Don't worry. We'll get to the awards. Number 15. What, what, what the? 15? Are you? Wait a minute. Are you telling me the 16th team won? They moved up? Oh, my God. Minnesota. How do they lose? Minnesota at 15 still lost out. Take that, Chase Davidson. <laughs> All right. So, the 16th overall team moves up to six. That's great for Ottawa. So Ottawa has a guaranteed top two pick. Vancouver at 15. Buffalo at 14. Toronto at 13. Islanders at 12. Calgary at 11. Detroit at 10. Tampa Bay at 9. Seattle at 8. Pittsburgh at 7. There's 16. So the Dallas Stars move from 16 to 6. Wow. What a draft lottery for them. That'll help. Uh, 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 Los Angeles. Right. So now we're back to being 5v5. 4v4 St. Louis, so 2, 3, 3 can move up, 2 can move up, yeah. Washington gets number 3, so 2 could still move up, yeah, oh my god. Number 2, I think that's, I think that's at San Jose, no way. Number 1, the Ottawa Senators have won the first overall pick three years in a row. Oh, they're going to get a dynasty. Oh, they're going to have a dynasty over there. Oh, no. <laughs> and Bear Ernie. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that is potentially going to be a playoff matchup sometime in the future. Utah versus Ottawa. In the Oh, that would be, that would be great. That would be great. Illegal. Elite. Oh, yeah, isn't there a rule now you can't win in back-to-back -back years? Well, it's not in EA Sports' game. View retired players. What do we got here? Patrick Kane. Remember that late goal he scored in game one to send it to overtime? That was scary. Patrick Kane retiring as an Edmonton Oiler. JT Miller, he is gone. Taylor Hall, uh, David Perron, Drew Doughty, Tarasenko, JVR, Saad, Kane. All right, so a bunch of guys taking off. Uh, goaltenders, hang on. Did we lose anyone? Just making sure now. And let me look at goalies. Goalies in the NHL. Sergei Bobrovsky's gone. Jonathan Quick is gone. Varlamov, Kemper, Martin Jones. All right. So making room for the new players in the NHL, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, did we lose anything, Tucson? Or no, we did not lose anything to our coaches. Good draft interviews. No pro scout. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Let's lock it in. Let's lock Ottawa in as the uh, first overall pick. There it is. And let's take a look at the awards, all right? So we'll do this whole thing. We'll take a look. Uh, first off, the playoff tree, just be just in case you guys want to make some fan art. There you go. Oh, man, the Rangers had two sweeps. And then, oh, man, they had a game seven in the second round, two sweeps, and then they get beaten five games to us. Montreal, man, Montreal on their way. They got all those defenders. I'm trying to just look for some storylines here. Yeah, the Edmonton Oilers. Oh, the Oilers. They were looking good. Seven game series, a win against uh, 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 the Anaheim Ducks just to get swept by us again, man. The Oilers in, in three years have lost eight games. 0-8 in eight games in the playoffs. That is crazy, man. Progress reports. Yeah, we're going to get all that. We're going to get all that. We're going to get to the contract screen, see if we have any player growth, any any potential growth, all that. Don't worry. This is what this video is, all right? I know you guys have been here for a while. We had a lot of fan art, but we're going to get this done the right way. Woo! That looks good, ladies and gentlemen. The Utah Yetis, your Stanley Cup champions. Ah, oh, it's locked in now. That is nice. President's Trophy almost had that last year. Damn. 
The Rangers had three President's Trophies in a row to lose to freaking Toronto and then, oh my God, and then to lose to us in the final. They just can't get it done, man. They just can't get over the hump. Uh, Art Ross goes to Jack Hughes. Hart Memorial goes to Jack Hughes. James Norris goes to Josh Morrissey. Lady Bing goes to Pasternak. Calder Memorial Trophy goes to Bear Ernie. So look at those look at those rookies. Jared Veshi, Kevin McKenna, and now Bear Ernie, baby. Con Smythe, Logan Cooley. Playmakers, right? All the playmakers winning the Con Smythe in this universe. Vesna Trophy. Jeremy Swayman taking home some hardware. You love to see it. Bulldog wins the Vesna. William M. Jennings goes to Thompson. Bill Masterton. Uh, what is that? Exemplifies the qualities of Preserverant. Was that because they put Lynch in the AHL as first? These guys was a first overall pick. I was a first overall pick winning the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy. Get the fuck out of here. Jack Adams goes to uh, the Vegas Golden Knights coach. Uh, Frank J. Selke goes to Nico Heischer. And Ted Lindsay Award goes to Jack Hughes. Jesus, Jack Hughes took everything. Maurice Richard, just not the, uh, the, not the Maurice Richard. Almost took that. Okay, so there are your awards for year number five, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, all right, so are we going to have any growth for our players? Any growth for our players? All right, hang on, let me hide this, let me hide this. Let's start from goaltender. Jeremy Swayman kept his 90 overall. Good. So Sway will be just as good as he was this year next season. Cornyn, 82 uh, in the system. Bloomfist. Uh, Heinz, 60 overall. Let's go, Heinz. High elite. My pet project. Uh, we're going to see how that plays out. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, goaltenders, Heinz. So did the contract work the way I wanted it to? So Heinz should only have two years left. Yeah, he's going to have two years left because we're still in the 28-29 season. So I'm going to have to check that again when we get to the resign stage. I want to make sure. I want to make sure. Uh, defensively, main roster. All right, so Quinn Hughes. He wants the extension. He wants to stay. Buddy, I'd sign you for 10 mil. I can't for it now. I cannot do it. Warinsky, Chickering, Kurtz, an 86 now for Kurtz. Was he 86 before? He might have been 86 before. Any X-Factors? Any X-Factors? Not any X-Factors yet for Andreas Kurtz. Uh, uh, Lindstein, uh, an 84. Romanov, all right. Helsin, Kesselring, uh, right wingers. Jared Vesh, 94. Jared Veshi is up to a 94 overall. Look at his shot. 98s across the board. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go. Patrick Line. Yeah, he's got his X-Factor still. Rymo Curry grew to an 87 overall. That is exactly why GM Superb Man did what he did. He played him on the first line. He gave him power play time. And now he's a fucking 80. Does he have X-Factors? Oh! What have I done? Holy shit. It's going to be plus five on the first line. What is it? Puck on a string. Great stick handling. Shut down. Elite rush defending. Ice pack. Great shot blocking. Truculence. Great hitter. And no contest. Great puck battling. He's a penalty killing... Fucking body checking, stick handling, shot blocking beast. And he still hasn't got the okay, okay. And we got him locked in for eight years at 3.5. Oh my god. I got Don in there. Does Don still have his X Factors? Don't lost an X Factor. All right, so you can't have everyone. Karpatsev. Karpatsev didn't grow in the system. Noranin up to a 79. Okay, okay. I got locked. I got him locked in as well. Uh left wingers, Michelli, 86. Still has his X-Factors. Gunther, 84. All right. So, Gunther, because we didn't give him power play time, he lost his X-Factors. But he could still come back and be good on the second line. He's only 26. I can get him his, I can get him some X-Factors back. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Nabokov, Agent 47. Nothing there. Okay. Still okay with this. In the system, Zadorov. Not really any any growth from Zadorov. Norin in the AHL was growing more than Zadorov. Cooley. Cooley dropped down to an 88. Look at that. I think because his point totals came down, right? Yeah. Last season, Cooley had 97. This year, he had 71. So, if Cooley's dropping down, I think that means that Cooley is a legitimate 89, 90 overall. But he had a down season. So, next year, I just got to make sure I double him up on the power play. We'll get that number back up into uh, to 90. Don't worry about that. Cooley's a legitimate elite player. It's fine. Uh, it goes up and down. Gregor. Sivan is a... Wait, was Sivan medium elite? I thought he was low elite. Sivan? Perfect third liner of the, oh my god, we gotta lock up Sivan, we gotta lock up Sivan, we gotta lock up Kurpatsev, Kerfoot, good job buddy, oh my god, in the system, alright, 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 let me think this through, uh, YouTube, 
for the sake of uh, of editing and keeping you guys interested, I gotta I gotta talk with the YouTube and Twitch scouts right now. All right, Utah. I have talked with the Twitch scouts. I've tw talked with the YouTube scouts, and I think we know what we want to do. We have different options here, but the first one is that we have too many forwards on this team, all right? Our younger players are starting to break through. So I just want to show you guys, try to visualize it yourself, all right? You got uh, Jared Veshi, you got Logan Cooley, you got Curry. There's your first line. You got Patrick Line, you got Doan, and I'm going to hold on to Dylan Gunther. Because I can get those X-Factors back, and this guy works on the second line, and he kills penalties. That's key. And he's also a playmaking power forward through who throws the body, all right? Not so much a sniper. But this guy could work out on our second line. So we're going to save some money with Doan and Gunther. And line A scores all those goals. So that line is going to stay together. I'm not going to break that line up. Gregor is going to stay in the depth. But then you got Karpatsev on the third line right wing. Nabokov, the third line left wing. Sivan, third line center position. There's your top nine with Gregor as the fourth line center right so where does that leave Michelli? and that's where I think Michelli becomes perfect trade bait he's 28 years of age 86 overall he's still got three years left at six uh six million dollars per he's got x factors in there but in terms of what we need he's not going to be getting any more power play time on this team we're not going to be playing him in the top six and uh realistically he was on the fourth line for our playoff run after he went down with the injury now he played well on the fourth line i'm not looking to talk negatively about him but i think we could flip michelli and do the same thing that we did in the first nhl entry draft was acquiring a buyer's first round pick for next season and seeing if we get lucky with the draft lottery that exact plan delivered us fourth overall from the new york islanders andreas kurtz in year number one right so i think that's what we're gonna do now here's where it gets a little tricky i want to send out the extensions right now so Cornyn is going to be our backup for the next two seasons all right i can't go any lower than that so it's going to be two years at uh, 0.8250 for Cornyn. bang there it is that's going to be our backup goaltender defensively we are not signing Quinn Hughes we're going to bring back Warinsky he's going to play with Kurtz Chikorin with Lindstein we're not bringing back Romanov but Hellison and Kesselring I'm going to bring these guys back the reason being we know they work it's perfect trade bait if I need to flip some salary later but we know they work on our team and they know and we know they work on the penalty kill all right so this is again taking a step back we can't have a stacked blue line anymore we got four guys we got to just uh Cut our losses uh, where we can here. So I'm going to give Kesselring a two-year extension. He's only 29 years of age. So 2.250 for Kesselring. There it is. Maybe a little bit of an overpay, but uh, I'm not trusting free agency with those defenders. All right, we don't have a lot of money. I got to get these guys locked up. And Hellison, the exact same thing. All right, so these are not contracts that would be hard to move on from. If we need to, we absolutely can. But I'm going to try to get these guys locked up. Two years at 2.50 for Hellison as well. All right, you guys can say what you want. GM Superb Man is cooking right now. In the system, now, there's this defenseman, Svensson. Really don't think that uh, they're going to grow too much. So we could add Svensson into the Michelli trade. All right, everyone else, that is taken care of. Main roster, right wingers, nothing there. Uh, in the system, Nordin, we've already already extended Norton. Will he make the NHL squad next season? We will see. Left wingers, no one there in the on the team. In the system, no one there either. And then the center core, you got Kerfoot. We don't need to re-sign him. In the system, you got Douglas and Rempe, who I do want to extend, but we can keep them to two-way deals so they don't hurt our salary cap. But Tukanen. Now, Tukanen is medium elite, 22 years of age. He's already at 74. Um, normally I wouldn't sign a guy like this, but we are low on centers. And if he is a center, which he is, his face-off category will get much better. And eventually we're going to need a fourth line center. So perhaps this guy could be the fourth line center and I could sign him eight years right now. Lock him up. All right. One point, uh, 1.250. There you go. Nice round number for two. Can it bang? So we are taking a step back to take a bunch forward in a few years. When we know who we have, we can then, with the salary that we're going to have saved up, go after big-time free agents like we did this year with Quinn Hughes, all right? So I think that is everything. Hang on, let me just double-check here. Romanoff, no, we're not re-signing you. Kerfoot, no, we're not re-signing you. Douglas and Rempe, I'm going to wait on you two guys. Svensson, doesn't look like you're going to become much. And Andronov, waiting on you. All right, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. So we are going to head into the NHL entry draft with Michelli as our one trade piece, looking to get some draft picks back, all right? So, bang. There it is. 
And no, we are not giving up multiple roster players just so we can keep Quinn Hughes. We already talked about that. I want Kurtz to be the top offensive defenseman on this team. So the Ottawa Senators on the clock. What player are they going to take? All right, so while that's going on in the background, let us see who wants Michelli. Michelli, thank you very much for your time here, but uh, you've lost your ice time. You can go be one of the best yeah, players on another team. That's all. That's three years left at six mil for a 28-year-old proven playoff playmaker. Hell yeah, this guy would fetch a decent price. Hell no! I'm not trading him to the West. Nope. The New York Islanders. Oh my god. I could do it again. I could do it again with the Islanders. Hell yeah, I gotta do it. All right, okay. So they want the 12th overall pick from this season? Okay, so hang on a second. Hang on a second. Maybe to hell with a lo draft lottery pick next year. Let's see. Well, who's going to go 12th overall this year? I didn't uh, really uncover that much. 12th. Uh, Bernard Larock, left wing from the QMJHL. Uh, Jody Bonino, all these guys after this. Kubina. Yar. <laughs> Burned Yar. Another German on this team. The only problem is we do not know anything about them. So, unfortunately, I don't think trading for that 12th right now gives us anything. I'd like to uh, push it back a year. Because we have a good season. We have a boatload of young prospects that we got to play. Let's push it back a year. All right. So, I'm going to go Michelli again. Uh, and we're going to bring up the New York Islanders here. All right. So, yeah. Edit trade. But his last name is Yar. I know. I know. All right. So, let's see what they got here in uh, the New York I I Islanders situation. Or what their situation is. So you got Noah Dobson locked up seven years. You got Matthew Barzell, 32. Bo Horvat, 34. Are they buyers? They are buyers. They're, they're going for it, man. Their team is getting old, and they're trying to get it done. Ray, what's your team looking like, buddy? It's not looking too good. Really old here. Jonathan Drew in. 4.6 million. How? Oh, my God. Hey, Tanner Howe! There he is! Tanner Howe! That's who we traded for Andreas Kurtz, essentially, right? Tanner Howe for Andreas Kurtz. I'll take that. That was a good trade for us. <laughs> Any extensions on the 10 million? They gave Drew in a three-year, $30.3 million extension at 34 years of age. Oh, yeah. Their general manager is making crazy decisions. We can absolutely fleece them. We can absolutely fleece them, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Okay. So the Islanders are going crazy. All right. So, Islanders, what I want from you... I want your... When do we get our first rounders back again? Hang on a sec. We start getting 2020, uh, 2029, we don't have any first rounder. 2030, we don't have any first rounder. 2031, we don't have any first rounder. All right, so we're almost there. Only two more drafts after this one, we get first rounders back. But maybe I can get one for next year and the year after that. And we're immediately back into the uh, first round of the draft. So let me put up that first. Let me put up uh, that first. All right, now we're on to... So what the hell happened? The Ottawa Senators, with the first overall pick three years in a row, select the right-wing sniper, Hanzus, baby! Hanzus goes and joins guys like Tim Stutzel, Bear Ernie, and Gordon Lynch. Whoa, look at those X-Factors already. Patrick Hanzus, he's got hands, ladies and gentlemen. Look at his shooting category. He's a sniper elite. Oh my god. They are going to have 250 goal scorers on that team. Hanzus and Bear Ernie. Oh dear god. San Jose. They got the first overall pick in year one. It was Nathaniel Chioda. What have they been doing? They're still getting more. Alright, we'll come back there afterwards. Hang on. He's got big rig with five foot nine. He got five foot nine big rig. That's hilarious. Alright, so the New York Islanders. Uh, all right, so I want your first for next year, your first for the year after that. All right, Michelli's going to be there for three more years. So I think that'd be a little bit much, but Michelli, you know, I, I can see this happening. They're making stupid choices over there. Michelli, all right. League approves the deal. All right, so it's not going to go through. What else could we do? All right, let me think about this. Let me think about, let me think about this. What else could we give them, do you guys think? Goalies matching the block, no. Draft picks, no. I don't want to give up any draft picks. Uh, look at Veshi's trade value, man. Warinsky, no. Cooley, no. Curry, Line A, Kurtz, Ivan, Karpatsev, Chikorin, Hughes, Michelli, don't. Quinn Hughes has that much trade value just to get negotiating rights for him? That's perfect. I'll give them Quinn Hughes. Oh, now we're on to something. Oh, now, now I can almost guarantee Quinn Hughes going to the East... This helps out their freaking Stanley Cup all-in push. 
but now they're they're too much okay 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 well i could retain half that salary i mean it's only for it's only i, I pay like a couple hundred thousand or whatever it is from now to the resign stage okay okay gm superb man work in the system here ladies and gentlemen let's see what we can do He's cheesing it. No, no, Michelli is the value. I'm not gonna... I could probably get, like, two more first-round picks for this. I'm gonna do this right. You know GM Superman always overpays for contracts and for trades because I don't want to be accused of fleecing the system. We're gonna do this right. Holy shit. How long does this take? <laughs> There's still... Oh, my God. All right, so we're gonna have to take some contracts back. Do you have any bad contracts? <laughs> Hang on a second here. Uh... Uh, Boone Jenner, <laughs> 6 million at 30, oh Jesus, alright, I'll take that off your hands, Pelic, as long as they don't have extensions, I'll take that off your hands, you're getting Quinn Hughes, uh, uh, Mayfield, no, I don't want to take that, Colt, no, you know what, those two, probably enough, yeah, there it is, Michelli and the negotiating rights for two first round picks from the Islanders, starting next year and the year after that, I think it's good, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's good. Hang on, let me just... I, I'm rushing because the San Jose pick is there. San Jose drafts... Uh, what was his first name? Michael Teverdosky. Maybe a Selkie candidate. He's got stick him up already as a two-way forward. Well, that's going to help out Gavin McKenna. It's going to help out Nathaniel Chiodo as well. They got a center over there in San Jose. Very good. Very good. All right, let me try this again. Let me try this again. Let me try this again. Islanders. Because there's no guarantee. I can't act like they are for sure going to sign him. There is no guarantee. So let's let's make the trade without guaranteeing that they're going to get Quinn Hughes, all right? So they're just freeing up the cap space. I'm giving them Quinn Hughes. Let's still go through. Okay, I don't even need to retain anybody. That's how I'll do it. Michelli. Oh, for God's sake. <gasps> ah! Give me a second here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, EA Sports, why not have it so I can just move every number up individually? No, too much work there. Well, if I gotta fucking sit through it, you're gonna sit through it with me, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta stop swearing. Didn't mean to. Oh my god. 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 There it is. They can't sign Hughes even if you give them the rights. Why can't they sign him? Because contracts for next season? Hmm. You might be on... All right, all right. So maybe I can reflip it and help them out a little bit. Uh, so you, like, uh, take on Wallman, and I'll take on Wallman's contract as well, and I'll reflip Wallman, all right? Uh, Engvall, and I'll reflip Engvall. No, they can keep Engvall. There you go. That's their problem because it drew in? Yeah, that's true. No, no, I don't want to fleece the system. All right, so I'll take Wallman off their hands, and then we'll just trade Wallman to a team, a buyer for a seventh. All right, there you go. All right, so I'll get Wallman in there as well, and then I'll reflip Wallman. That's that's fine. We want to make sure that we're not hurting the uh, the uh, New York Islanders too much right here. All right, they'll have $6 million, and there's a bunch of other firsts that are coming off the deal. I don't even know if they still can do it. Hang on, they might not be able to even do it still. Uh, one, two, one, two, one, drew in. Druins get the extension. Yeah, they, they're still not going to be able to do it. No, they're not. All right. So you, you guys, yeah, you convinced me with that. No, they're not going to be able to re-sign Quinn Hughes with their salary cap situation. So let's not fleece the, uh, let's not fleece the system. All right. So let's just get a first for next year. Uh, I'm not going to get two firsts for that one. That's a little bit much. A first and a second. All right. For uh, Michelli. So would you guys say that that one's all right? The first for next year makes sense. They're going for next year for a playoff push. All right, so they're expecting to do it. And then the second overall, or the second rounder in the year after that, just so we can get a little bit. Green, green light. Yeah, I think that that's a good one. All right, so Matias Michelli, thank you very much for all your time here in Utah, brother. But it's time that we move on. We got a youth movement here, and it's time that we part ways. Good luck over there in, uh, in New York with the Islanders. Will it go through? On behalf of the New York Islanders organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we have traded away Michelli to the New York Islanders. So, let's see what their forward core will look like now. Michelli becomes what there? Michelli becomes their third best forward on their team and the cheapest forward as well. Only making $6 million per year. That's really good. Thank you, Matias. Let's get some fan art for Matias. The Washington Capitals get T-Law. Oh, my God. Yeah, nation's capital where the laws are made. Tim Law is laying down the law in Washington. Oh my god, Tim Law, baby, the law in Washington, you love to see it, uh, alright, so, now, fine trade, let's see the Quinn Hughes situation, is there a team that could take on Quinn Hughes, and, uh, and want him, hang on, Quinn Hughes, a 16 mil, there's nobody, right?
No. No, no, no. We are... Here's the thing. Here's the dilemma that I'm having. If we drop him, he's going to go to free agency anyways, and some team's going to sign him. So it's not like it's not like I can control his destination here. All right, so let's just let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. That because Winnipeg they came back. They were a good team, man. They finished the regular season with a good record. So let's try to find an Eastern Conference team. Washington. Ah, oh, they're going through a rebuild. Uh, I'm not even looking for buyer status. I'm just looking for a good East team with some South. Pittsburgh. They just lost out on. Uh, but why would they want to trade for him? Would that turn that team around, Butch Nevis? No. The, you kind of do want a Stanley Cup contender in there as well. Uh, the Rangers. No, no, no. We don't need to get them too, uh, too strong. The Devils. Oh, my God. The Devils. So much salary cap. I don't know, man. I don't know. The Oilers. <laughs> no, I don't need that happening. Detroit. Hmm. Detroit Red Wings with the Iser plan. They got some young players. Yeah, 25 years old, 27 years of age. What's their defensive core look like? Uh, oh, yeah, that's that's the one. That is the one, the Detroit Red Wings. All right, he's from Michigan. He's from Michigan. Yeah, that one's a good one. All right, so the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, what do you got? The 10th. You don't have your first for next year. Oh, no, you have a lot of draft picks. You got your first from next year, but with no guarantee that we're going to get it. So you know what? You're going to give me a second round pick for next season just for the chance to sign Quinn Hughes. It's not too much. They're not losing out on a first or anything like that. It's just a little piece, all right? Two seconds. No, no, no. I don't want to cheese it too much. There's no guarantee that they sign it. They want to give up the second. They got a good team. I think that's a good one. More? No, I don't want to fleece the system, all right? Quinn Hughes, thank you very much for giving us a Stanley Cup. The Twitch scouts were the ones that gave GM Superb Man the suggestion. I really did appreciate the Stanley Cup, obviously. Good luck over there in Detroit, or good luck in free agency. Bang, there it is. Yeah, good luck, good luck. Boys, boys, you got to think about the trade value a lot more. I'm getting a lot of red lights in there, but we, we gave him to the team that will not get in our way, hopefully. The Detroit Red Wings. All right, I'm, I'm doing it. None of you thought, none of you came into this draft thinking that we get value for Quinn Hughes, all right? So, stop it. That's plenty. That is absolutely plenty. All right, so other than that, do we have a... Uh, oh, I didn't mean to actually click on that. Other than that, we really don't have anything. Oh, that one defenseman. I forgot to add him into the trade. Shit. Uh, who was it again? It was Svensson. Svensson. One year left RFA. Anybody want Svensson? Nah, there's nothing. There's no value for it. There's no value for it. All right. Yakupov. Yakubov goes to the St. Louis Blues, ladies and gentlemen. Right wing sniper. These are, this is a good draft. This is a freaking great draft class. Hanzus, Tevardowski, Law, and Yakubov. Oh, my God. All right. So what uh, draft picks do we have? We really don't have any other trading assets. Uh, I got my third. I got my fourth. I'm just going to draft with them. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a slower year for draft. We won the Stanley Cup. Let me just go through all the salary. Keep, 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 keep. Yeah, we're keeping everybody. Keeping everybody. All right. So let us see if we can get lucky with a little bit of of drafting here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So let's sim to pick 96, all the way back to 96. We will call a timeout. All right. Let's go through the first and second round, see if we picked up on anything. Uh, it's very important as well, the uh, the Minnesota Wild first rounders, because remember, that's our first rounder that we got or that we gave to the Minnesota Wild, right? So you got Stillman, uh, Coriston, Dallas. Damn! Dallas moved up from 16 to 6, and they landed a medium elite that got overlooked by L.A. Huge. Huge, huge, huge. How? Oh, they missed out on how as well. Kalinin, power forward. Uh, not power forward, sorry. Uh, playmaker. Top six, top four, top six, top four, top six, top six, top six, top nine, top four, top six is in there. Uh, Eminger. So that's the guy we missed out for the Jared Veshi, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, uh, trade. Not that bad. Second rounders. Anything in here? Any medium elites? Low elite. I go Stino. Man, Philadelphia has been drafting well also. Uh, anything else? No, no medium elites, no low. There we go. Tersembaev going to Nashville, a goaltender, medium elite goaltender. Strom, hey, great draft for the Washington Capitals. They get Law and they get Strom, medium elites. Way to go. All right, so lots of goalies. Uh, anything else? Starter, medium top six, medium top four, top nines in there, top sixes in there, some lows in there. Medium elite, Sopel. Medium elite, Eric Sopel going to the Boston Bruins. Left wing, medium elite sniper. That would have been a good one. 
That would have been a good one. Boston, they got their hands on a good uh, a good player right there. All right. So, what do we want to go for? So, if I sort by gems, anything? There is a gem. Uh, ripe and unknown potential, but he's a goaltender. All right. We go by potential. What do we got? We got Solomon Ludman with the high elites or Johan Brunstrom. Now, I can get Johan Brunstrom at 232. Uh, top six, 105. Vic Anthony, that would be a guaranteed top six playmaker. He could play both left and right wing. Uh, Thorne and Haglin, no. Low top six is no. What about a medium top four? 132. Yak Savard. So it's really about like a, just a nice piece defenseman, a nice piece forward, top six or a top four. Or you're taking a shot at the uh, the high elite goaltender. What do you guys want to do? I will let the Twitch scouts decide here. They have hit in the past. I, I, I You could go either way with this one. Ludman, even if he isn't high elite, chances are he's probably medium elite. He's got to be. He's three bar at high elite. What do you guys want? Solomon? Solomon? Lude for the trade value? Ludman for sure? All right, all right. So what we are going to do is we are going to go after the goaltender, Solomon Ludman. If he is high elite, we will not sign him. Because I've got my pet project right now with Heinz. This can be the Twitch and YouTube section's uh, uh, pet project, all right? Solomon Ludman, the first draft pick after the Utah Yetis have won the Stanley Cup. With the 96th overall pick, the Utah Yetis select Solomon Ludman, goaltender, baby. He's not goalie goalie. Ah, shit. Hang on, third round. He wasn't goalie goalie. But he is a high elite goaltender. Wow, we got two high elite goalies on this team. Well, the replacement for Jeremy Swayman is either going to be Hines or Ludman. Way to go, Twitch Scouts. Way to go. The Twitch Scouts come through with a big, big selection. YouTube Scouts as well. Good job, Boyles. Way to effing go. Yeah, we hit. We definitely hit. All right, so let's sim to pick 128 now. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, top six is, I mean, we're in the uh, fourth round, so probably not. It's always nice, though, if you can find one. No. All right, so make pick. All right, so what are we going for now? Uh, I can go the gems again. Uh, you got that, but we already got a goal. Like, we already, now we got too many goalies. We might as well, yeah, 232. Yeah, 232 is Brunstrom. And then these guys, what was the other guy? I would like to take Savard. At 132, we have the 128th pick. I would like to take Savard, and then I would like to take the Swedish guy as well. Top four, offensive defenseman. You can't go wrong with that. I, I think let's just get the piece. Yeah, let's do it. With the, with the 128th overall pick, the Utah Yeti select from the QMJHL, Jacques Savard, baby. Let's see. Oh, I hate when you win the Stanley Cup. You go, oh, that son of a bitch. It's, it's annoying. Whatever. We want a cup. Medium top four, 55 overall at 19 years of age. If anything else, trade bait. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Sim to pick 160 now. Uh, trade? Oh, I guess they, they hung up the phone after calling. Whatever. All right. Uh, so now I'm sorting by this again. Low elite Brunstrom. I'm just going to do it at 160. I'm just going to do it. Offensive defenseman, low elite. I'm going to make the selection here. Johan Brunstrom with the 160th overall pick. The Utah Yeti select Johan Brunstrom. What is he? Hang on. I'm going to have to wait and go back. <laughs> Round five all the way to the 30th. Uh, 49 overall low elite. Again, maybe nothing, but we got him on the team. It's good. It's good. I'll take that. I'll take it. Uh, sim to pick 192, round number six. We have two draft picks remaining, ladies and gentlemen. Now we can have some fun. Now we can have some fun. So do we take a shot at these uh, low elites or... Oh, man, low top six, low top six. A grinder, Haglin, Marcus Haglin. A grinder. Hmm. Grinders do work with Adam Wright. The heaviest? You know what? I'm going to get the grinder. I'm going to get the grinder Haglin, and then with our 7th rounder, we'll go for the tallest guy. So with the 192nd overall pick, the Utah Yeti select Marcus Haglin. Low top 6 grinder. Yeah, I want I want another grinder on this team, alright? So I'm going to take it. Yeah, there it is, alright? 48 overall. I know, not great. It's a 6th round pick. What do you expect? Uh, sim to pick 224. I'll take that. Last pick of the NHL entry draft. Imagine we got like a gem. That'd be so fucking hilarious. All right, so who's the biggest guy? Height, six foot six, 230. Who's the heaviest dude? 244. He's 20 years of age. We need someone new. Uh, defenseman, Antoine Gagnon. 
Six foot five, 231, 18 years of age. Are we doing it? Are we doing it? <laughs> we going the heaviest or are we going the tallest? Check the low elite size. Oh, God. I got nothing. Fratten. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, uh, weight, height. Yeah, we'll go back to the height. Let's see what we got. It's got some 18. Ah, Chuck Viturl. Six foot six. His name is Chuck. Oh, my God. Do we go after that one? Chuck Round four, Dallas John. What do you, uh, Chuck Fratten? People are saying Fratten. Where do you see this Fratten guy? Fratten. Oh yeah, yeah. But he's already. The problem is he's twenty years of age, so he's been he's been there growing, and he's still five years. No, no. I want to take a shot on an eighteen year old. I want to take a shot on the guys who are just generated. You know what I mean? So no, no. We're not going to do that. All right. So I'm going to make the call. I'm going to go for. Uh, I'm going to go for. Uh, yeah, Chuck. I'm going to go for Chuck Veteral. <laughs> Federal, federal, six foot six, two thirty. With the last pick in the NHL entry draft, the Utah Yeti select Chuck Federal. Can I even see it? I I couldn't even fucking see. It. God, thanks a lot, game. And there you go. The draft after they win the Stanley Cup. Ludman, high elite. Savard, uh, uh, medium top four. Brunstrom, low elite. Haglin was low top six, and Federal. We will see. <laughs> All righty, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let's get to the offseason. Ooh, our head coaches need to be signed. All right, so we are going to do the offseason in this video. All right, so we got to get it done. Michael Kesselring has extended. Good. Uh, Hellison has extended. Good. Cornyn has extended. Good. Tukadin, eight years, baby. Good. We got them all signed. Let's get a save in there. Let's get a save in there. All right, perfect. All right, so the coaching staff. All right, so I don't know if we're going to be able to get Reed Camilleri back as an associate now that he's that good, but it's got to be Adam Wright. Adam Wright is our head coach. I was thinking of the pinch cycle for our defenseman, but it just wasn't. It just the cards just didn't play out that way, right? I need to take care of. Uh, I need to take care of, uh, of our captain Jared Veshi. So Adam Wright, you're going to be our head coach. I'm signing you to an eight-year extension, buddy. Uh, six and a half million dollars per season. All right, I might have to go more if I want him on ever, uh, eight years, but. I'm willing to do that. And then Isaiah Angelitis. Isaiah, I'll give you a team in the AHL this season. All right, bud? I'll do it. AHL head coach. Uh, 1250. Oh. We'll give him a team. We'll give him a team down there. AHL head coach. There you go. Dallas had a, a franchise in the fourth round. Okay, we'll take a look at that. I'll take a look at their roster in a second. I must have missed it. Uh, Camilleri, yeah. So I do want to get Reed Camilleri back as a uh, as an associate coach. Reed, you want to come back, buddy? I might have to go after him in free agency. I'll give you five mil. I got I got seventeen million dollars of budget. <laughs> please, please, I need you back, Reed. I need you back. So I'll wait on these guys as well. Uh, Pro Cop as my goalie. Hell yeah, my goalie coach. Eight years. I'll pay you. I'll pay you. There you go. One million dollars for my goalie coach. Yeah. And then everyone else, I'll just, uh, he's, there's no way I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm, there's no way. I've been here before. They, they are not going to sign. Uh, our scouts, yeah, I'll send the scouts back out again. Um, all right, so on the main roster, you got Swayman. You got Cornyn locked up. Bloomfist, all right. The Tower of Tamlin, baby. Yes, I'd like to get you back. Three years at 8250. Stillman, we don't need to sign yet. Hines, I got him signed. Only two years? Yes. All right, so two years right there. Hines has only got two years left before I can extend him. So next year's free agency, I can go long term with him. But we won't sign Ludman, all right? I'll listen to you guys. Romanov, we're not bringing you back. I will scratch you. All right. Thank you very much for your service. Svensson. What do I want to do with Svensson? Oh, my God. What do we do with Svensson? Do I just cut him at this point? Low elite. I mean, I got to give him one more year. How many defensemen do I even have to play down there in the system? One, two, three, four, five, six. Froats. Letavori. Uh, five. I got so many. I got to get rid of him. Yeah, I'm going to cut him. I'm going to cut him. I don't I don't want to qualify him because then he might accept the deal. Yeah, I'm going to cut him. All right, bang. He just didn't work out. Look at me cutting low elites. Jesus. Andronov, 20 years of age, 57. Defensive defenseman, maybe become something. I'll give him a shot. I'll give him a shot. There you go. Trade. No, we tried trading him. No teams were interested. You got to look. You, we got to be honest with ourselves. That's a bust, all right? If someone else wants to pick him up and give him a shot, fine. But no team is going to trade anything. Uh, Savard, 
and uh, Brunstrom, we're not going to sign you guys. We'll let you play where you're going to play. We already have a stacked AHL. Uh, right wingers, uh, Karpatsev. We can extend Karpatsev this offseason. Noronen, 79. I got him locked up now. Haglin, uh, that was the... Haglin is the grinder, right? Vit <laughs> Viteral, hey, low, low bottom six. Low bottom six enforcer. With the, with the last pick in the NHL draft, I got a low bottom six instead of AHL. He could be something. He could be something. See, I told you, go after the generated players. All right. Left wingers. No, we don't need to do anything there. And centers. All right. So, Kerfoot. Oh, I want to bring Kerfoot back. Kerfoot kind of works out. How cheap? Oh, yeah. I mean, two-way deal. Hell, yeah. You can come back for a two-way deal. That's not going to hurt our salary cap. Douglas and Rempe. Yep, Douglas. Tough guys down there in the AHL. Signing you three years. Rempe. Yeah, the Tower of Tamlin. We got a big team down there in the AHL. You don't want to fight with us. I got Tukanen locked up. Olivara. And that is everything, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's advance a day here. Rempe is back. Kerfoot. Oh, my. I felt I could impact the NHL roster more if I was given a chance to play. You fucking bum. All right. My, he just won a Stanley Cup. He's looking to cash in. It makes sense. All these other guys signed. What do you... Kerfoot, no one's going to freaking play you, buddy. Are you... I got $8.6 million of cap space. Ker, Kerfoot, come on. All right. All right. There you go. What? Oh, it's a two-way deal. That's what... I'll give you a one... I'll give you a one-way deal. There you go. 1.1. There you go, buddy. All right, that's a 10% increase of what you're asking for. Oh, uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely thrilled with the role, but after... Oh, God, thank goodness. Adam Wright is back as our head coach for the next eight years, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God. Uh, and uh, Isaiah Angelitis, the exact same thing. He is back for eight seasons. Oh, thank God. Uh, Reed Camilleri, I don't feel the role. Oh, no! All right, so we've made a decision. We're not doing our pinch cycle with Kurtz. It's going to have to be Adam Wright. Oh, man. Maybe I can get him back, though. Um, Zdenka, Zdenka Prokop is back. Thank God. We got Prokop back. Kerfoot comes back for the extra 10%. Good. Uh, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we got everyone signed. So the team is pretty, uh, the pre the team is pretty much the exact same as what it's been. I got everyone locked up last season. Uh, this is the scouts now that are accepting the deals. Get them all locked up. Very nice. Trevor Lewis is back. Let's advance a few days. And let's see. Did they pull it off? Did the Detroit Red Wings pull it off? Or did they give up a second round pick for nothing? Let's see if it was a good trade by the Iser plan. Hughes, they locked him up. They locked him up. It was a great trade. I get a second round pick. And they get Quinn Hughes, and Quinn Hughes is in the East. So that's really good. So that's the kind of contract he was going to ask for, boys. $14 million over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I, I couldn't do it. He got his money. He got $20 million from us last season. Jesus, the guy signed like a 10-year extension, if you include last season with our $20 million. Good Lord almighty. Johnny Fleece? No, I got a second. We were going to lose him for nothing. I got a second. I sign Quinn Hughes, I get a Stanley Cup, and I get a second out of it for free. That was a great, that was a great move. That was a great move. All right. All right, so let's advance the day and get into free agency. There you go, yeah. Yeah. And I'll save it again. There you go. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, free agency. What kind of players are available out here? So let me just sort by UFAs for uh, for the start. Bowen Byram asking for 14.6. You see what I mean? These freaking defensemen. They ask for so much. The fact that I got Kurtz for 8.875. It's a steal, man. Robertson, Namella, so no real bona fide superstars. What about RFAs? Lots of RFAs, though. Grossman, Talender. These guys were drafted ahead of Kurtz. So, Talender was drafted third overall in the same year that Kurtz was drafted. He's already 91 overall, and he's asking for 12.5 million. I got Kurtz. He's not 91 overall, fine, but he ain't costing me 10 mil plus. Good God almighty. Chiodo, the first overall pick by San Jose. He's there as well. Jansevsky, what is with these four first overall picks not getting signed? Chase Davidson screwing the pooch, and so is the, the, the general manager of the San Jose Sharks. Oh, my goodness. All right, so we got $8.5 million of cap space. Um, well, before we do this, really don't need any players. I, I, I think we just go after some guys to help out our, our playoff push. You know, like if, if defensemen are there that can replace Kesselring and Hellison. I wanted to lock them up just in case, but okay. 
So which players can we extend now, ladies and gentlemen? So the extension is official. We have begun the new eight-year window. 11.5 million for Veshi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I'm going to extend anyone, it's going to be a seven-year extension because it's going to kick in next year, and I don't want anyone to go further than Veshi. So Gregor, he doesn't want an extension. Uh, yeah, I'll just wait on Gregor because he might drop. He's a good player, but I got him locked up for one more year. That's fine. Karpatsev. How much is Karpatsev going to want? All right, so that is, it's good news that we can save money, but remember what Curry wanted, right? His 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 numbers went way up, so Karpatsev might be like a Curry where he kind of maxes out there at 82, 83 overall, but I'm all right with that because all I need him for is like the third or fourth line. So seven-year extension at 2.750 for Sergei Karpatsev. All right, I'm going to lock him up. Same price as Nabokov. Sivan! Vladislav Sivan, medium elite now on Sivan. Oh God, will that affect the uh, how much he's gonna ask for? Three point six. I got uh, no wait, like two point. It's got to be three point two five zero. Green light. I think we got to do it. We got to do it. Seven year extension at three point two five zero for Vladislav Sivan. Bro, giving out Lula and Morello contracts. I got to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, Lula, yeah, 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 yeah. Seven years. Going to lock him up. There it is. Sivan locked up, hopefully. Kerfoot, Nornan locked up. Zdorov. All right. What about in the system? Is there anyone else we can go for? Uh, Froats. Now, the only thing about Froats is he's pinch cycle, and he's not playing in the top four. He's going to have bad chemistry. Should we be... Nah, we should probably just keep him as an RFA so we can trade him. No, 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 no. Koivu and Lundqvist. No, 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 no. And goaltenders. Bloomqvist. Now I'm going to wait on you. And then Hines is up next year. All right. So we got all those guys signed. All right. So as long as I don't sign anything more than a one-year deal, it won't affect the extension. So we're not going to go anything more than one-year deal here. All right. Goaltenders. What do you got? Jed Greaves. He's leaving the Jets. No, we don't need a goalie. Uh, defenseman. All right, so any defenseman that's nice and cheap. Let me see. Caden Gooley. Is his first name Caden? Caden Gooley. 83 overall. Defensive pairing number two, all power play lines. You know what? I need depth. I'm going to, uh, yeah, one year. And I could also trade this guy. One year, 2.750 for Gooley. All right, there it is. Uh, anybody else? Uh, three mil, two. I'm looking. Oh, 2.5. McCabe, he's 35 years of age. Poirier. He's down to 81. Ferraro, Romanov. No, you're getting down there. One mil, Connor Timmins. Mm, okay, I got the one I got the one defenseman. Uh, let's see. Is there anyone cheap here as a forward? Vetrano, 35 years of age. Uh, Mikheyev, no. Uh, looking for someone who's cheap and young. Brisson? Oh, here we go. Who's this guy? Brendan Brisson? Okay, I'll, I'll pick you up. Sure. One year at uh, 2.750. Oh, yeah. There you go. Just get some depth for our team. I did say that I want to help out Isaiah Angelitis in the AHL. So these guys, just injury players or some some trade bait for us. Barrett Hayton, Kapanen, uh, Lafiere, Capo Caco. Ooh, Capo Caco. Fourth line for Capo Caco. Yeah, I'm going to do that as well. Capo Caco might be able to play fourth line time for us. So one year, yeah, I'm going to do uh, Capo Caco. He was in the Stanley Cup final. Bang, 2.5. So that should be somewhere around uh, uh, 7. Yeah, Zuccarello didn't re just go away, go away. Oh my God! All right, and uh, last but not least, let's sort by potential. Let's see if we got anyone here. Lamala, who the hell? Seventy-eight overall, defensive defenseman. Got to sign him. Got to sign him. One year, yeah. Got to sign you. One year at uh, one point two five zero. Yep. Hey, I'll give him one year, one mil. There you go. If another team picks him up, so be it. Svensson. Uh, we just got rid of him. Festerling, offensive defenseman, 19 years of age, low elite. Wait, undrafted? All right, I'm getting you too. There you go. Uh, I got to give him a rookie contract. I'll pay you. I'll pay you. There you go. And then Byram and then all these other guys down here. All right, good. So we only have like 11 spots on our roster. So let's get the extensions done. All that good stuff. The coaching staff. All right. So let's see what we can do with the coaching staff. Uh, so I did read the comments about how your associate coach should be power play. Your assistant coach should be penalty kill. Let's see if we can do that. All right. So I'd like to try to bring back Reed Camilleri. Any teams interested? No teams interested. I'm going for him. I'm going. Reed, please. All right. Eight years as the NHL associate coach. We, we created magic. All right. I gave six and a half million to uh, Adam Wright. I'll give you six million. All right. I can't give you more than him. I'll give you, I'll give you six. 
Uh, there it is. 6,004,750 over eight years. I need you. I need you. Offer contract. Read Camilleri. Please get him back. All right. Because I want to make that change. The power play. Yeah, I know it could be A plus, but he's getting better every year with Adam Wright. And if we want to make the change to pinch cycle, this is the guy. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting rid of that. But the penalty kill. All right. So the penalty kill. I just need a cheaper with some, maybe some teaching. There you go. Teaching. This guy. Head coach. 129. Ballard. You can be my penalty kill coach. All right. Norm Ballard. Associate coach, uh, three years. Yeah, I just want to make sure I get him. Uh, and I'll make sure I pay you $2 million per year. There you go. Very good. Uh, so that's the associate coach. That's the assistant coach. Then I need some associates and assistants down there for the, uh, the minors. I just want to get the best teaching. All right, so that these guys can really help out. Generalist, yep. AHL associate coach, three years. I don't want to, I don't want to have him go somewhere else. There you go. And then another teaching forwards. I, I'd rather teaching generalist. Yeah, you, generalist. All right, AHL assistant coach, three years. Holtz for $1 million, Johnny, in free agency. Holtz, all right, all right. Well, if he's still there, I, I'm, running out of, I'm running out of roster moves. So let's just uh, let's just try to take it one step at a time here, guys. Uh, teaching, uh, 375, 374. Yeah, I'll get this guy for the AHL goalie coach, Harrison Pellick. All right, there you go. All right, and that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. Are there any good scouts that I could hire out there? Any good scouts? Yeah, there are two A minus scouts. What's their efficiency look like? A minus, A minus. Yes, I will get these scouts signed. Add them to the lineup. Just keep on getting the best scouts every single year. All right, and then we will cut ties with our two worst scouts that have bad efficiency. So let's see, efficiency B, B minus. Is there another B minus in there? So the first two, that's fine. All right, so Johansson, you're gone. And Ryan Reeves, you're gone, buddy. Sorry, you've been you've been replaced. Ryan Reeves is gone to oblivion. So he can go scout for somebody else. Don't care. Do not care, ladies and gentlemen. Do not care. All right, so let's advance the days here. We're waiting on... <sighs> he came back. Thank the hockey gods. I kept the pinch cycle, pinch cycle. So our backup plan for our pinch cycle, pinch cycle is staying with the team. Reed Camilleri, baby. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. He is back. Holtz, Johnny. Norm Ballard. All right, so there is our a our NHL assistant coach. There is our AHL associate coach and our AHL assistant coach. So they all sign. Beautiful. And our goalie coach for the AHL. Everyone is yelling at me. Holtz, Johnny Holtz, boys. We got to hold on. I, I got too many players on the team right now. Tukanen, I got to edit the trading block. All right. There. Are we done? Just clear all. How about clear all on one button? I click on that screen. Hit Y. Clear all. Fuck it. Is it that hard? Jesus. Come on, we're almost done. Just don't, don't let the EA voodoo get to you. Omar Festerling. He's a scout. He's back. Oh, no, that was actually one of the players, right? Yeah. Caden Gooley. He is on the Utah Yetis. Capo Caco. He is on the Yeti. Uh, Breeson is on the Yeti. Ladislav Sivan locked up long term. Eight years. Samu Lamola. He is on the team. Sergey Karpatsev locked up. Eight years. Let's go, boys. Let's go. All right, so we got them locked up. So let me go back into free agency. Yeah, I got a feeling like our AHL is not tough enough. Let's uh, let's just uh, let's get a little tougher down there in the AHL. There you go. All right, Arbor Jack guy. He's gonna go join Rempe and Douglas and the Tower of Tamlin down in the AHL. Anyone who has to play the Tucson Roadrunners are gonna be shitting their pants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all right, so let's advance the day. Let's get to it. Uh, let's get Arbor Jack guy signed. Yes. <laughs> so stupid all right so our off season is complete we got the scouts we got the coaching we got 2.4 million dollars cap space i got 44 contracts out of 50 so we got the flexibility but now let's see what this looks like locked up long term veshi kurtz curry sivan karpatsev nabokov norinen all locked up for the next eight years. And in the system, add Tukin into that as well. So, by the tail end of this Stanley Cup window, that's when we can start to bring in some big-time contracts. Because we got the nice, long-term, cheap ones locked in now. Alright, so really not much else to do. I know you guys want to see what our team looks like, so let's jump to preseason. Okay, so here we are, the beginning of year six. We're not doing any simulating. We're going to be closing it out soon. I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at our team, and I wanted to see if we had any growth here. Have any growth here. All right, so hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Roster moves. Let me send down uh, the players and bring up the right ones. So Swayman, Coronin, and Hines. Hines up to a, a 62. Let's go, Hines. <laughs> 
just, Hines is going to play. All right, I'll take that. Defensively, Warinski 89. Does he still have his exact elite? Warinski still has his exact elite. Not dropping off just yet. Uh, Chikorin, does he have his exact Yes! My two older players did not drop off at all. Kurtz is an 87. No X-Factors, but he will get X-Factors this year. If he's at 87 overall, all we got to do is play him. So I got an 87 overall defenseman at 22 years of age, locked up for 8 years at 8750. While other defensemen are asking for 13, 14. Oh, uh, yep, I made the right call. I made the right call. I 100% made the right call. Uh, in the system, what do we got? Who is this guy? Lom I got to bring him up. 81 overall. Who is this guy? I did, the scouts said sort by friggin' potential, Johnny, and they found me a defenseman, Lamala. I gotta see, if he works out in the third defensive pairing, that could be perfect. Good job, Twitch scouts. I didn't even, I didn't even think about that one. Kerfa, Tukanen, you're getting your ass up there. I gotta see what the team looks like. Gotta see Norn and Sivan Nabok. Oh, no, I don't need him yet. Kako, Kako, get your ass down there. Yeah, yeah, and Brisson. I don't need these guys yet. Yeah, I wanna bring up the guys. I wanna, I, we gotta see what, what it looks like, all right? So... Here are your Utah Yetis for year number six, ladies and gentlemen. Will Curry give us a plus five in the first line now that he's got X-Factors? Oh, my God. Okay, hang on. Oh, my God, please. Please stay plus five. Please stay plus five. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh! <laughs> yes. Well, what was that? What was that about stunting Veshi's growth? That's your first line of the future. Curry, 22, locked up eight years at 3.5. Cooley, 25, locked up for five more years at 9. And Veshi, 21, locked up eight more years at 11.5. Grinder, playmaker, power forward, plus five first line. What about the power? Will he? Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. So line A then on the second line. Gunther still helps out. And then Doan. Okay, so if we can get Gunther and X-Factor back, that second line will go up there. Is it because of Doan? Yeah. All right, so Doan ain't great on the second line. So we're thinking about maybe Sivan for the second line of the future. Sivan and Nornan? Sivan and Karpats? I don't know what I'm doing yet. I don't know what I'm doing. Right now, it's this, all right? Third line, Sivan. Sivan didn't grow, but he's good for the third line. So that's Nabokov, Sivan, and Karpatsev, right? Oh, it's a zero. Karpatsev to the second line? Ooh, Karpatsev. Where does Karpatsev play? Ah! Karpatsev looked like he'd be the best on the first line. What about what about Curry? Yeah, Karpatsev might be. I mean, he's good, but he, unless he gets X factors, it's going to be rough to find a way to have him in on the second line. Uh, but you there, you there. That's a weird. He doesn't win faceoffs. Yeah, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. But it's one of those good problems, right? Nornan. Let's see, Nor. Holy shit! Nornan can work on like any line. Sivan Nabokov Nornan. Playmaker, sniper, two-way forward on your... Th so you got your first line taken care of. You got your third line taken care of. You just got to figure out that second line. Maybe Sivan, Nabokov, and Norn into the second line. Does that work? No, that's not going to work. I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't know what I'm going to do, but we're, we're at the start of something here. Tukanen, what's your chemistry looking like? All right, so Tukanen might be a good fourth line center. I don't know. We can play him there. Uh, Gooley. Hang on a second. Defenseman. Lamala, what's your, what's your, what's your, what are you looking like? Ah, pinch cycle. So Samu Lamala would be good with, uh, with Reed Camilleri, but on the third defensive pairing, not really going to work out, right? What about the penalty kill for Lamala? Hang on, penalty kill for Lamala. Does he like it? He does like the penalty kill, though. It's a good pickup. If you could get a guy who's really good on the third line, then put him along. It's a good pickup, this Lamala guy. It's a good effing pickup, man. Um, and then power play, right? Oh my god, please work. So if I put Kurtz over here, I put Line A back here, I put Veshi. Oh my god, if it's plus five with, with Curry, I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> please. 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 Not on the power play. But good news, I just remembered this. Good news, Kurtz has no power play X-Factors yet. Once Kurtz gets the X-Factors, it'll enhance it all. It's okay. There's still a silver lining in there. Kurtz just doesn't have his power play X-Factors yet. That's okay. That's okay. We're halfway there. We're halfway there. All right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. There is your year six Utah Yetis. Yeah, Zadorov didn't jump. Rempe, Karkner, my defenseman down here. Hellison, Paulson, Froats, Latova. No, the, the defensemen don't look uh, like they're growing at all. But our NHL is growing. Curry and Kurtz, the two players that were shit on last season, actually grew. And they're now both 87 overall at 22 years of age, locked up eight years. 
I won the cup. I got the young players to grow. I got them locked up. What the hell are the freaking uh, scouts on YouTube and Twitch going to say about me now? Ladies and gentlemen, the dynasty might be beginning. We got an eight-year window, and it starts right now. Year six. So let me know what you guys think. Anything and everything. And in the next one, we will begin the path towards the destiny. What's the dynasty? Oh, fuck. I fucked up the ending. No!